All right. Well, we're going to hop out of the doom and gloom and go into the fun stuff. So uh, now we're going to move into the topic of movies and TV. Uh, the way this works is we're going to go around and each talk about a movie and then go back around and talk about a TV show that we've either watched recently or we really love and going to share it with the group. So, um, Lane, what do you have for us? Yeah, so um, my movie is actually called The Trial of the Chicago 7. Uh, it's on Netflix right now. It came out very recently. Um, I think it's a good movie to watch right now because it's very topical uh, because of all the election stuff going on. Um, in a way, it kind of highlights that, but not really at the same time because it talks more about a, an actual event that happened back in the 60s during the Civil Rights Movement. Um, basically, I'll just say some of the main uh, actors in there. Uh, you got Eddie uh, Redmayne. Uh, he's from Les Mis, Theory of Everything. If y'all seen those movies, uh, he's a really good actor. Um, reminds me a lot of you, Molly. He's, he's very soft-spoken in the movie, but when he does talk, you're like, dang, this dude is, he's a badass. <laughs> so you'll, you'll really appreciate him. I'll be need to go watch Make it. Um, yeah, exactly. So um, and then you got Joseph Gordon-Levitz, which everyone knows. Um, he didn't actually play, he played a supporting role, but it was very minor. But he did a really good job at his part. Um, then you also got, I always pronounce, mispronounce this dude's name. It's uh, Sako, or yeah, Sako Baron Cohen, uh, the dude that plays Borat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Borat. Uh, Borat, you know. Uh, what else? Uh, Talladega Nights, even Dick, uh, the dictator. Um, <laughs> he was really funny in it. He so basically, without getting too in depth in the movie, there's three main groups that are put on trial for uh, trying to, uh, you know, fight for their beliefs. And what it is they go to the Democratic Convention and they're trying to do a peaceful protest, but of course it gets out, way out of hand and turns to riot. And uh, throughout the movie, it kind of like jumps back from the courtroom back to you know, when the riot, like everything that happened through it. And uh, yeah, his character was hilarious because they were led like the yippies, which is the youth hippies. And uh, some of the stuff they do in court, they just are like the very far left, like just way out there, like crazy activists. And uh, they like even dress up like the judge one day and the judge is like, what is going on? And they're just like, nothing, your honor. And like, he's like, do you have clothes on in there? He's like, sure. And they take it off and then they're just wearing police suits. <laughs> it's just like... Oh like these guys are gonna like everyone looks at them like they're gonna get them you know in so much trouble but uh yeah so you got them you had the black panthers that were involved obviously um and then uh the I forgot what it was like sdm stands for like, it's basically the student-led movement which is eddie uh eddie main's character red main's character um and so it's just crazy to see how it all goes down and how uh the judge even kind of has his own thoughts and beliefs that he pushes on it. It's like, you know what, I, I don't, you know, you, and then you look at the uh, jury pool and uh, how that also affects the movie. Um, and it's just, I don't know how to describe it. You just need to go watch it. It's a really good movie. And uh, it's, it'll keep you on the edge of your seat the whole time. Like you'll laugh, you'll kind of be like, oh dang, that's sad. And a lot of emotions. So yeah, I definitely recommend it. It's a good movie. What, uh, what genre would you consider? Is it like full on like crime, courtroom drama kind of thing? Or is it like a mashup of a few different things? It's, it's a mashup, but definitely it's, it's a courtroom movie. Um, it's also drama and actually even a little bit of comedy because um, there's some parts where you're just like kind of laughing. But um, yeah, that's why I love when you can't put a, a movie in a certain genre. It's just like all over the place. And that's why I think it makes a really good movie. So yeah, there you have it. Nice. All right, what do you got, Mobley? All right, so my movie um, is called Mandy. Um, it's a, a horror movie. I would say it's sort of like psychedelic horror. It's um, very interesting and kind of a new sort of genre. Um, the, the movie came out in 2018 and directed by a director named Panos uh, Kozomatos, and I know I didn't pronounce that perfectly. <laughs> um, it stars Nicolas Cage. Oh. And I know I know that a lot of people think that Nicolas hey, Cage yeah, is a horrible actor, but let me tell you something. Nicolas Cage is a fantastic B-movie actor. And this movie is like perfect for him. Like the role was made for him because what happens in this movie is like, it's sort of just like, like, I don't know, you would say average life for some people who live sort of out in the woods and they're just sort of living their life together um, for the first little bit of the movie. And then something, really crazy happens and there's this cult that comes through their area and really messes with things and like I'm not really going to give you any spoilers um, 
or maybe I'll give you like a slight spoiler. Mandy dies, and it's because of the cult. And, what? And it makes Nicolas Cage's character so angry oh. that the rest of the movie is like the psychedelic revenge series of just like he goes and like he goes on this rampage, and it's like. Like you, you would think that you'd get bored of watching him kill people after like forty-five minutes of the same thing, but no, they just keep it interesting. I just, I think you need to watch it. It's a, it's like there's a lot that you can't put into words, but it's visually very, very satisfying. Um, like the cinematography, the colors in the movie, the way that they use lighting, it's all super visually interesting, and a lot of the story is told through images rather than you know like dialogue. Um, so overall, I would say it's, it's very like artistic, um, but also sort of just like genre bending, like you said, Lane. Like you mm -hmm. mentioned, that that honestly, and that sounds just like a Nicolas Cage's powerhouse. Just when you said cult, psychedelic, and just mind, I was like, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much him right there in a nutshell. Right. Yeah. yeah see, he's been putting out some great stuff lately. The first thing I was thinking is like, if he's going on this rampage, rampage. You could almost say that he was uncaged. <laughs> you could, yeah, you could say Nicolas Cage is uncaged in this film. Yeah, they should have just called the movie Uncaged. <laughs> well, then he wouldn't have been in it. He dies. There'd be no cage. That's true. Yeah, they need Nicolas Cage in the movie, so. Right. Or maybe he dies, like, in the first five seconds. It's like, oh, oh. what? <laughs> he was wearing a wig, and he actually was, uh, was it Mandy? Yeah. He was Mandy, yeah. Yeah, so they're hitting, he turns around the wig and they're like, whoa, plot twist. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> now that would have been good. That's wild. I think I've heard of that movie. Um, I never, I never I've actually, I never heard of it. What, uh, where can you watch it? Where can you watch it? Um, like well, at your house, I know, but like. At my house, yeah, you have to go to my house to watch it. Exclusive okay, well, perfect. <laughs> at Mobley's house. <laughs> <laughs> He made it's the, the only copy of the movie on Earth, and Mobley has it. If you want to, if you want to watch the movie, I'll email it to you. Yeah. <laughs> Just record the whole thing on your iPhone. Yeah. Say shot on your iPhone at the end of it, and then send it to me. <laughs> should should, I, should I Google Apple. it and let you know? Is that a thing um, that we should say? Yeah. Sure. All right. Let me see if it's available on Netflix or what. As I'm sure one of the big apps will have it, like Netflix or Hulu or. Amazon or HBO yeah. or I'm gonna keep naming them all. Oh yeah, I think it's on Netflix. Oh okay. Well, oh, Netflix. Okay. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Usually when I'm trying to find a movie, I just kind of go down the list. Like, is it here? Nope. Is it here? Nope. Is it here? Maybe. You know, and it's gotta go all the way down until I have to purchase it on my Amazon or or iTunes, which I don't mind because they they have pretty low rental prices. Uh, I don't mind paying that, but it's not a bad deal. Yes, quite. All right. Um, so for my movie, um, this one was an interesting movie for sure. Uh, it's called Tenant by Christian Nolan. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. And um, uh, Mobley, have you seen it? I haven't seen it. Okay, so Lane, you, you saw it, but you only maybe saw half of it. Yeah, yeah. Probably it's the. I'll just say it's the worst movie to fall asleep to. Um, yeah. <laughs> So fell asleep about during the middle part of it, which is probably the most crucial part to watch. Yeah. I will say though, I woke up during the last like 30, 45 minutes and oh my gosh, I was like, I don't know what's happening, but this is crazy. So, so for those who have not seen it, Tenet uh, is a movie that came out this year in the theater, uh, which I highly recommend if you have not seen it to go see it in, in a theater. If your local theater is open right now, check it out. It is a, a an amazing experience. It's, it's you know, Christopher Nolan's bread and butter, um, loud noises, muddled dialogue, and incredible like <laughs> layered plot. It, it is everything that I love about Christopher Nolan films. And I would say uh, I got to see it twice in the theater um, right before the theater started to close. Um, I, you, you almost have to see it twice. Um, but that was probably the, the coolest thing was seeing it in the theater. But I know it is coming out on VOD. Um, at home uh, to, to watch pretty soon. So if you don't feel comfortable going to a movie theater right now or your theater's no longer showing it, you can catch it uh, on streaming uh, pretty soon. But anyway, um, so Tenet is, 
is a large movie, very large movie, um, directed by Chris Nolan. Um, some of the people in it, you've got uh, John David Washington, who's the, the lead character, um, who happens to be, if you didn't know this, Denzel Washington's son. So you've got this next generation of, of Washington's coming into the acting world. So uh, he's great in this film. Um, you really don't learn much about this character. Um, he doesn't even have a name. Um, and they just kind of like say, here's the lead guy and you go with it. Um, but basically just to kind of sum it up, it's like, um, uh, the synopsis is the, a secret agent embarks on a dangerous time bending mission to prevent the start of world war three. So it's, it's, it's like if you took a James Bond movie and then mashed it up with like back to the future and inception. It's it's a really really awesome movie to watch. Um, it it's one of those things that definitely like all his films makes you think. Um, but it's one of those things where you have to mul multiple experiences with it. Um, and coming out of the theater, just I, I just felt this high of like wow that was awesome. I don't know completely what I just saw, but I knew it was awesome. Um, some of the other people in the movie, uh, forgot to mention Robert Pattinson, Michael Caine. Um, I can't remember the guy's name, but he played Gilderoy Lockhart in the Harry Potter films. He's actually the bad guy in this movie. So it's kind of yeah. all goofy and weird in Harry Potter. And then seeing, uh, as this like really menacing, um, Russian bad guy. But, um, but yeah, it really kind of follows themes of James Bond, uh, with the secret agent approach and um, throws in a lot of like wild sci-fi uh, kind of plot devices that you just kind of kind of, and as, as they say in the movie, don't try to understand it, just feel it, um, where they explain a lot of these things and you're, you're either like in it or you're like, mm, I don't know, but I'll see what happens. But basically you just kind of push through the movie. Uh, at the end of the day, it's a 10 out of 10. Um, definitely one of my favorite um, Christopher Nolan films. Uh, I, I could I could watch it over and over and over and find something new every time. Uh, there's a lot of places where you can get lost, uh, especially if you do fall asleep. But um, <laughs> if if you do get lost, there's a lot of different entry points back into the movie. You're like, okay, now I know what's happening. You know, so they they kind of give you opportunities to like fall in and out if you if you happen to not keep up. But um, but like Lane said, the the final act um, is is something that I've never seen before. Uh, and the way that they they show time travel in the movie is really awesome. Um, they play with the idea of inverted time, where people are moving forward in time and also backwards in time. Uh, and the idea that the people moving forward are you know going at a normal rate and then you're going backwards at the same rate. Um, it's, it's wild to explain. I'm not even gonna try to get into it because I don't wanna give any information on the movie other than like what it is. Um, but yeah, highly recommend you see this in the theater. If not, check it out as soon as possible so you don't get it spoiled. Um, it's a great movie. Um, so yeah, Tenet by Christopher Nolan. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, Mob, I know you haven't seen it. You need to see it for sure. But uh, the way the last scene was shot was so intense. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, I really have no clue what's happening, but uh, like this is good like the picture on it was insane well the technological um, advances that that are in this film like i'm sure they used a lot of visual effects and a lot of practical effects so you can't really see where where it begins and ends that's the crazy part like you you don't ever know what's trickery and what is real and so that kind of just like another layer on top of it it's like wait was that real or was that like camera tricks and, and visual effects so it's so it's so wild I mean, it's like, it's obviously different than Inception, which is literally all just like, you know, these, these giant, <laughs> videos, like, obviously that's not real. But like in this, it's like, it kind of like plays with your mind a little bit and makes you think that things are real and they may not be and vice versa. Right? Yeah. It like blends in with reality and not reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mobley, you should, you should definitely check this out if you can in a the theater or at home, because I, I think you'll really enjoy it after the third time. <laughs> yeah. after the third time yeah. No, yeah i love movies like that that definitely uh sounds very interesting yeah it, it definitely has like uh like space odyssey vibes to it um mm -hmm. uh, maybe not as out there as, as space odyssey but um but definitely that high level thinking and high concept 
um, story and plot and everything. But then they, but then they give you enough information where you can, can, can kind of follow the movie for what it is. Like, I wouldn't say, I mean, I know a lot of people might've walked out confused, but I would say, um, the more you watch it, the more you understand, the more you'll, you'll love it. So. Yep. There you go. Check out Dan. All right. Um, we're going to move on to the TV segment of this topic. And um, Lane's going to start us off with his TV show that he would recommend to us. Yes, I will. Um, the name of my show is called The Unicorn. And although it sounds like a kid show, it is not. <laughs> it's actually... So The Unicorn, it's, you can watch it on Netflix, by the way. There's one season out right now, which we flew through. It's like just a little bite-sized episodes like 20 to 25 minutes um it's like a feel-good comedy but like i can compare it to like modern family or like the goldbergs which i don't watch but i know they exist it's one of those shows where it shows after the super bowl or some big event on tv it's on abc or nbc it's just like just so happens to be on the tv so it's like well i guess i don't really know what else to watch i guess i'll just sit here and watch it <laughs> and but i gotta say though like this is actually, it's a really good show. Um, I'm kind of biased, too, because uh, the main actor's name is uh, Walton Goggins. Um, he plays in these HB shows, on HBO shows, uh, Vice Principals and The Righteous Gemstones. If you haven't seen those, those are hilarious comedies. And it's funny because in those, he's kind of like, not really the bad guy, but he's just kind of misunderstood and just like set in his ways. And you can kind of see where he's coming from. And it's funny to see him go from that role to in The Unicorn, He's basically this uh, guy that, uh, he's a widow, his uh, wife passed away, um, and he has two daughters that he's trying to raise, and he's got like a close-knit group of uh, friends that are helping him out along the way to get him back in dating, and that's hence the name Unicorn, which I never knew this was a term, but basically it's like he's too good to be true, like it's what everyone, every woman looks for, is like a really nice guy that is widowed and has, you know, two young daughters that he's raised by himself really well. And so that's basically why he's the unicorn. <laughs> and I was like, I never even knew that existed. But then again, unicorns, I guess, don't exist. So it's, it's a crazy concept. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's just funny to see him play that guy role because he was not in that in his, his past uh, acting or roles. But, but it's still funny because he is actually a really good guy in real life. Um, so it's just funny to see him be so diverse in his roles and uh, it actually has some really funny moments in it where you're like, wow, I'm, I'm like, I know it should be like a cheesy show, but it's actually really funny and like pretty wholesome. So yeah, definitely check it out. It's, it's like I said, it's easy to watch short at, you know, episode you get down one, you're like, oh, that was it. That was quick. <laughs> you just fly through it. So yeah, I hope, they keep, I, keep, I hope they keep going on because they, like vice principals are done with, they only shot, I think two or three seasons and that was it. Uh, Righteous Gemstones, I don't know how much more they're they're signed up to do, but they only have, I think, one or two seasons out as well. So, yeah, I definitely recommend it. What would you kind of compare the show to? Uh, like I said, it, it's, it's literally one of those shows like Modern Family or uh, The Goldbergs, if y'all seen that. Um, but those are the two that come to mind. Just the way it's shot and the way it's set up is just so, like, you know, every character has their set, like, who they are and you, you know someone in real life that's exactly like that person or, or know of someone it's like just this stereotype um so yeah, I'd, I'd have to compare it to those two shows even though like I, said, I don't really watch them it's it's just it's really good like i said it's a feel good like family comedy but it's it's like i'd say it's like top tier for sure it feels like there's so many of those out there right now um i like i almost feel like i see an, another like sitcom show or another like family comedy you know, on streaming almost every day. It's so weird. It's kind of like a, a rebirth or, you know, kind of a, a new age of, of these shows because that was so popular 20, 30 years ago. You know, almost every TV show was one of those. But now it's seeing like a resurgence of that through streaming uh, is very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the old school stuff, like even like kind of like Roseanne, like I'd say it's kind of almost like – that, well, that, that was like that era, but like now it's like kind of revamped in a way that it's, it's a lot, I don't know, it's different. It's just in a set in a different time period. It's like kind of the same, same concept, same elements. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And you said that was yeah. on Netflix? Yeah, it's on Netflix. Uh, just season one's out right now. So, 
yep, go watch it. <laughs> All right, Mobley, what do you got for us? All right, so uh, my TV show that I'm going to talk about is Twin Peaks. And Twin Peaks is not a new show. It's, um, it's been out around since the 90s. And um, it's got kind of an interesting story, um, an interesting timeline um, in reality as a show uh, rel- instead of the story's timeline. Let me talk about the show's timeline a little bit. Uh, so Twin Peaks, um, it came out in the 90s and it was released and it had two seasons on, I think, two different networks um, and a movie that were all released in like the 90s or maybe early 2000s a little bit. And it didn't um, get a whole lot of traction. Um, it was before Netflix, before any of the streaming stuff, and before people were really into cult um, followings of like TV shows and stuff like that. I guess people were, I mean, the people existed who would have followed it, but they weren't, they didn't talk as much because the internet wasn't around and forums weren't around, weren't around and stuff like that. Uh, but Twin Peaks, um, it had a cult following back then. And then um, recently, in I think maybe 2017 or something like that, um, they released a third season um, that was strategically paced out like 15 or 20 years after they released the last thing um, so that things could have happened in that amount of time um, that all played into the story in season three. And what, I, what the reason I'm saying all this stuff is like season one and season two in the movie are all kind of dry and kind of boring relative to season three. But if you can get through those prequel type things and then watch season three, it is mind blowingly good. It is like, it's really good. It's like Game of Thrones good almost, I would say. So wow. uh, let me start to, start to explain what this show is about relative to, um, I mean, as opposed to just all the other stuff that I just talked about. Uh, so Twin Peaks follows um, the murder of Laura Palmer at the beginning. Um, she's a girl who was mysteriously murdered in a town called Twin Peaks. And um, it's this murder is being investigated by the FBI. Uh, so FBI sends um, an agent, his name is Dale Cooper. He's played by Kyle MacLachlan. Um, and if you've seen uh, Portlandia, he's the mayor in Portlandia. That's the actor. Um, so uh, Agent Dale Cooper is a very methodical and very um, precise and logical type of person who um, has been sent to analyze this very mysterious and very sort of um, almost not logical murder in this very, very eerie place that almost seems supernatural. So it's sort sort of like the X-Files type of vibe where they're like, is it aliens? Is it uh, interdimensional time travel? What's going on with this stuff? Because there are things that logically could not happen in the show that he's trying to explain. Um, So season one and season two, they sort of try to take you through his his, uh, thinking and his uh, problem solving strategy. And um, it can be interesting at times, but like I said, it's also sort of dry and slow paced. And especially if you remember what TV was like in the 90s, it was a little bit slower than it is today. Um, so you, that's a little bit hard to bear through. Um, but season three, um, I'll, I'll give season three a little bit more time um, and I'll sort of like talk a bit more about what happens in season three. Um, so in, th- in season three, um, a lot of stuff happens in Las Vegas. Um, the main character loses his memory and he lives a different life um, as a different person for like half of the season. And um, it's one of the most frustrating things I've ever watched is to watch the main character of the show that you've been watching for so long, completely forget everything that happened in the past. But it did happen. But he's just like lost his memory. And so he's living like, you're just like watching a different show almost. It's like, oh okay, he has got a different name and he's a different person. But then he remembers whenever he sticks a fork in an electrical outlet. So, <laughs> um, I mean, wow. crazy wow. stuff like that's happening all over the place. Like he goes into space into this tea kettle type, type thing. David Bowie's there. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Just watch Twin Peaks. That's all I have to say. What a pitch. You just start off with David Bowie and I'm like, oh, done, I'm going to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the build-up. It was like all of this and then all of a sudden, David Bowie appears. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Whoa. I'm like, dang. So with Twin Peaks, it's, it has been uh, going on for many, many decades, right? Like when, when did it first premiere then? When was the last season? So they, they had um, stuff. It started off in the 90s. and um, Basically, at the end of 
their release in the in that time that initial release the main character goes to another place sort of like another world and he's going to be trapped there for 25 years and literally they didn't release anything having to do with the franchise for 25 years until season three came out whenever he gets out of that other world wow so, like it was just like the long game that they played and it was so worth it because they had all that time to work with it, all that time to think of ideas and make it really good. So that's commitment right there. Like yeah, to, really, to really sit down and plan out, okay, well, we're going to do these seasons now. And then 25 years later, we're going to do these seasons. If we can get everybody right. together and actually get it done. And it's like, that's, that's rewarding right there. Especially yeah. for the fans. <laughs> Dang, that's pretty wild. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think any show's ever done that besides like bringing a show back. Um, mm. but, like, this is literally them picking up where it first left or where it left off. Right. Yep. It also was crazy is if you just watch it in in sequential order, just the way that the production has changed. It's a big it's a big jump. It goes from being like 90s television camera looking type stuff to uh full HD like really good colors, vibrant colors that, you know, like a typical Netflix show looks like. Um, but it's not like the stuff, it's, it's like they, they tie in a lot of the older stylistic stuff very tastefully. So hmm. it's not an ab abrupt, almost like, oh, this is a different show now, but it's also not like really cheesy like it was in the 90s, you know? So it's, it was kind of a challenge, I, I would have thought, to integrate that older style into something that would, that would work in modern day time, but they do it well. Mm -hmm. huh. You know, it'd been even funnier if they got technology that was even worse than the nineties. <laughs> so like they're going even further backwards as they go forward, and it's like, yeah. oh wow, this is this got even cheesier and even worse. <laughs> they start using. And like then they the great value, David Bowie. That's <laughs> <laughs> or when he died, you know, they have him like weakened at Bernie's or carrying him around with sunglasses oh, on. Yeah. Like, hey, <laughs> 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 that would have been a good. I would watch that. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> but that that's a really cool um cool thought for a show and how they've been able to keep it up for this long. Do you know if they're gonna make any more seasons? Have there been any talks about it? So it's sort it's sort of like we we don't know. The creator, <laughs> his name is David Lynch, and people always ask him, it's like, are you gonna make another season of Twin Peaks? Um, he's like, what's that? <laughs> and he's he's sort of ambiguous about it. He's he won't say yes or no, and I don't know if he even knows if if he can or not or if he will. Um, there how he has sort of mentioned it's like I have some ideas uh, on the horizon, but I don't know if they're actually going to come to fruition or not. So it remains to be seen. Maybe that's interesting. I've always you know I've heard of Twin Peaks, and I, I just never knew all the mystery and like everything surrounding it, but that, that makes sense now that they were kind of, I mean, to have two different seasons on two different networks and then to wait so long and then to start again, I'm like, no wonder it just was kind of, there's no contingency, it was like very, yeah, split up. So, and one thing that I would add to that also is that season three, if they, that's the last thing that they ever release, it would be complete. Like there's, there's no cliffhangers or, I mean, there's nothing really like, that you're like, I don't, I need to know what happened to this person or what, what was going on with this instead. You know, it, it leaves, it ties up a lot of the loose ends. And if they wanted to end it at, th at season three, I think that it would be complete. Okay, yeah, because so I was going to ask you um, if they had left it kind of open ended for more seasons. But I mean, it is open enough, but it's, it's also close enough that they could leave it. That's, that was smart then on their part. Mm -hmm. So, wait, how many seasons are out? Three. Three. Yeah. Oh, just three. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they might just, he might just leave it like that or wait another 25 years. He's like, ah, here we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we're, now we're ready, <laughs> but they can always do something cool with it. Like if as you mentioned in the beginning of season three, that he's like basically mind wiped. Right. If he wanted yep. to do some kind of spinoff series or something based on that universe. They could totally do that. And like, it'd be like a spinoff kind of thing. Maybe new characters and maybe bring in some of the older characters as like references or they could go completely like just brand new and start uh, within the universe and just tell a different story, you know, as a continuation. There's, there's a lot of things they could still do, honestly. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
They could yeah, they, 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 they could do. They could do it kind of like how American Horror Story does it, where every season's a new story and a new, like a new case or something. Like that'd be kind of a cool concept. Because mm-hmm. in that way, if you miss the seasons, like I doesn't really matter. I can just go to the next one and keep going. Yeah, like kind of like Black Mirror. It's an anthology. Yeah, every, every yeah Black Mirror. Yeah. So I really, uh, I wish Stranger Things was an anthology. That would have been cool, rather than them trying to like tell that those kids' story for four seasons. I feel like it would have been cool if like each season was its own like Stranger Things kind of thing. Oh, we have a visitor. Oh. Speaking of Stranger Hello, Things. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what He's a kibbles. Kid. He's a kid. Kibbles. Nice. Do you have another cat named Bits? Yeah. No, <laughs> no dang it. 